Okay, here we're going to be going over the par value method for treasury stock. First I'll give an overview of the par value method and then we'll go through some examples here for the repurchase of the stock using this par value method. Now I'm not going to go through the reissuance of the stock using the par value method because there you would use the same procedures as using the cost method for reissuing stock. So I'll touch on that at the end. Okay, this is an overview of the par value method to record treasury stock. This is where we use the par value of the common stock that was repurchased here as treasury stock. And we use that par value here to record both the repurchase of the treasury stock as well as the reissuing of that treasury stock. And then in our cash account for any increases or decreases, we use the actual cash received or paid. And then the balancing amount here between our treasury stock and our cash amount would go to additional paid in capital for common stock uh, first. And that was where we maintain a relationship here between the common stock and its par value. And then if we need any additional balance, we would, it would go to additional paid in capital for the treasury stock. And then there is a rule here. You cannot debit your additional paid in capital for the treasury stock any more than the existing credit balance. And if you did need any extra debit amount, it would go here to decrease or debit our retained earnings. And then you have to remember you can never credit or increased retained earnings for any treasury stock transactions. So any gain or loss here uh, for our treasury stock would be recorded at the reissuance or the sale of the treasury stock and it would be done here in additional paid and capital accounts and then our retained earnings if needed. Okay, here we're going to be looking at the par value method for treasury stock and we're going to be doing a stock repurchase at a gain. To determine whether it's a gain, we compare the price that we're going to have to pay to buy the stock back versus the issue price of the common stock. So if the price that we're paying to buy it back is less than the issue price, then we have a gain. Now the treasury stock here, this based on the common stock's issue price and the par value of the common stock here that's being purchased back as treasury stock. So looking at our treasury stock account, we would increase it for the number of shares that we're buying back times the par value of the common stock. And then over on our cash account, we would be decreasing our cash account by the number of shares we're buying back times the actual price that we have to pay per share to buy it back. And then we, we go over here where we got our additional paid in capital to common stock. Now this is where we maintain this relationship between our common stock and our treasury stock. So in this case, we would uh, it calculate it here by taking the number of shares that we're buying back times the difference between the issue price of our common stock minus its par value. So in this case, we would be debiting our additional paid in capital here for $1,000. Now we would compare our debits here in our stockholders equity with our treasury stock and our additional paid in capital to our cash balance here on our asset side. So we had a $2,000 debit balance here in our treasury stock plus a $1,000 here debit balance in our additional paid in capital to our common stock for $3,000 and comparing that with our cash uh, balance, credit balance here of $2,600. We're going to need an extra $400 credit balance here in our equity account. And this is where we re we create this additional paid in capital to treasury stock. So we would credit it here for $400. Now um, you can see here you, we had to create this additional paid in capital here to treasury stock because we didn't have enough balance here in our additional paid in capital to common stock based on this relationship here between the treasury stock and our common stock. Okay, here we're going to be using the par value method for treasury stock and we're going to be looking at a stock repurchase here at a loss. Now this loss is determined on the fact that the price that we're paying to buy back this stock is greater than the issue price of the common stock here that we're buying back. Now this uh, treasury stock that's based on the common stocks issue price and the par value of the common stock that's being purchased back here as treasury stock. So looking at our treasury stock account here we take the number of shares that we're buying back times the par value of the common stock. So we'd increase our treasury stock for that amount. And then going over here to our cash account we would reduce it by the number of shares that we're buying back times the actual price that we're paying for those shares. 
And then we have to go over here and we've got our additional paid in capital here for common stock. This is for common stock. This is where we maintain this relationship. So we take the number of shares that we're buying back times the difference between the common stock's issue price minus the par value of that common stock we're buying back. And in this case, we had a $1,500 debit balance. So we'd compare here this, our additional paid in capital or common stock and our treasury stock balances with our cash balance. So in this case, we had a debit here of $1,500 to additional paid in capital for common stock plus another debit balance here of $3,000 in our treasury stock. So we have a $4,500 debit balance here comparing that to our this case a credit balance of six thousand dollars in our cash account so we need a balancing debit amount here of fifteen hundred dollars so this is where we go in and we create this additional paid in capital here for treasury stock but we can only debit it up to the amount of the existing credit balance that's sitting in in this case we had a four hundred dollar credit balance so we can only debit it up to that amount. We can only absorb that amount. In this is the case, it was $400. So then we have to come up with an additional debit amount, and that would be to retained earnings here. So we debit the additional amount here to or reduce our retained earnings by $1,100. Now, uh, in, you remember, you can never credit retained earnings for any treasury stock transactions. But in this case, we had to create this uh, paid in capital here for treasury stock and then when we run out or we absorbed all the balance then the remainder goes into our retained earnings and it reduces our retained earnings. Okay when we reissue our treasury stock or retire it using the par value method we would use the same procedures as the cost method here for treasury stock. The only difference is, is that treasury stock is credited at the par value of the reissued shares rather than its cost basis. So I have a video out on that that you can review using the cost method and then that would be the you just substitute in the par value for your treasury stock instead of the cost basis for that treasury stock. Okay, to summarize this par value method for treasury stock. This is where we're buying back common stock and we're storing it in our treasury stock account. So what we do here is we debit or increase our st treasury stock account for the par value of that common stock. And then we also go and we reduce the additional paid in capital for that common stock based on the number of shares that uh, we purchase back here, less the issue price of that common stock minus its par value. So this is where we have to reduce our additional paid in capital for our common stock because we've bought it back and it isn't sitting out there. And any uh, balance, go any additional balance goes into this paid in capital for treasury stock. The difference between our uh, balance here in our treasury stock account and additional paid in capital for our common stock and our cash account. And then remember you can only debit addition uh, this paid in capital for treasury stock based on whatever you have sitting in your credit um, balance here and any further decreases would go here or losses would go to our retained earnings you would debit or your retained earnings for any balances that you need beyond this additional paid in capital here for our our treasury stock and remember you can never credit retained earnings here for any treasury stock transaction. You can only debit or reduce the retained earnings for treasury stock transactions.